if we can create an institute of international trade and finance at the University of Nebraska that will begin to impact the lives of hundreds, uh, uh, if not ultimately thousands of students, uh, then uh, uh, we will have changed the world in the future. And what I hope we can do is persuade the University of Nebraska to create chairs that will have a very strong international orientation in the College of Business, the College of Agriculture, the College of Law, maybe even the College of Engineering. Let's get people who are thinking internationally, thinking globally in these positions. And if we can just get everybody thinking a lot more about things international, which they must do, then uh, uh, we will have left a lasting legacy. The Yoder Institute is a prime example of rethinking the way that we need our students to be equipped with the research work that is being done in these areas to be able to have the impact that we'll need to have moving forward. So the university takes that opportunity very seriously. We're very committed to that. We're expanding our student population by some 20%. Agriculture has been the leader in that student growth over the last several years. A huge level of momentum and growth of the university currently because we see these needs not only for Nebraska, but beyond Nebraska. This Yider Institute fits perfectly within that. Clayton is always reaching for the stars. He just always believes that this day, when he woke up, he faced the best day of his life. And he has been at the very, very outer extremes of the power system in, in our country. And it hasn't affected him. He is just the decent, honorable guy that grew up on that farm in Nebraska. Clayton really was the first person who started kicking the door down when it came to agricultural trade. So much of the work that I did was really following in his footsteps. Oftentimes I would sit down and um, someone would say to me on the other side of the table, uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, do you know Clayton Yider? I don't know of any other cabinet officer who's taken the time and the effort to help his successor move forward. I look back on those years as having Clayton as a true partner. Clayton had a huge impact on the WTO. This was Clayton's vision. His belief was that not only would you open up the marketplace to trade, not only would we be able to sell our beef and our pork and other products worldwide, but it would be a system based upon rules. It would not be a system based upon the whims of whoever was in office at the time. And we owe our modern day trading efforts uh, to, that, uh, to that belief that we could do agricultural trade based upon principles and rules. President George H.W. Bush writes of the Clayton Yider Institute. The Clayton Yider Institute for International Trade and Finance is a wonderful tribute to an individual who has truly had an impact on agriculture on a global scale. Clayton is tough as nails, knowledgeable, energetic, and a friend of agriculture. When I selected Clayton as the 23rd Secretary of Agriculture in 1989, I knew he would fight hard for farming and fair trade. He and his USDA team were responsible for much of the 1990 Farm Bill moving U.S. farm policy toward greater market orientation. Coupled with the markets, which opened during his time as U.S. Trade Representative, his efforts led to an unprecedented expansion of agricultural exports. I have no doubt that future generations of students will greatly benefit from the creation of this new institute and will be able to continue Clayton's legacy of being a game changer in the area of trade and finance. Clayton Yatter was not only bright, but he was extremely thoughtful. Uh, he not only worked hard, but he listened. He didn't just deliver a lecture. He heard what the other side said. He had the capacity to put himself in the shoes of the people he was talking with. And that made him both sensitive and creative. What Clayton taught us is that we were good enough to compete with anyone that if he as the negotiator could open the doors and through a rules-based system establish a level playing field 
then he built the confidence in the Nebraska farmer or rancher that we could sell our beef or our corn or our soybeans, wheat, whatever it was, any place in the world as a high class, high quality product. When I came in, uh, we had the largest trade deficit in this country's history, and there was a great clamor to do something about it. I heard all that uh, commentary as I was going through my Senate confirmation as U.S. Trade Representative, and I was convinced that uh, we had to have a very aggressive trade policy. Uh, Jim Baker, who was Secretary of the Treasury and uh, Chairman of the Economic Policy Council at that time, fully agreed, and he wanted to be aggressive in uh, in the financial arena as well, and he was. So between the two of us on trade policy and financial policy, we really had an aggressive administration with the leadership of President Reagan at that time. James A. Baker, former Secretary of the Treasury and Secretary of State writes, Clayton Yider is a first-class example of the model American public servant, a man who always placed his country's best interests above any other consideration. Perhaps his biggest accomplishments occurred when he was U.S. Trade Representative under President Ronald Reagan. His role then was indispensable during the negotiations for the historic 1987 Canada-United States Free Trade Agreement, which sparked the liberalization of trade, not only between those two countries, but also around the world. Our nation is stronger because of Clayton Yider's service to it. When the father of the World Trade Organization is a graduate, of the University of Nebraska and, and formerly a very prominent person in our state, it seems to me that it's an extremely appropriate way to recognize him. But it's very, very important that we start getting a significant effort into teaching our students the value of global trade, the value of international relations, and how interlocking these relationships are. I believe that international trade builds the bridge between the nations and creates peace in the world and that's where I hope um, all this knowledge and my skills will come into play. So I definitely want to uh, work in the international trade and agriculture between uh, the United States and Eastern European countries or other countries. That today we are a world society and as we interact uh, with different countries and different people we need to know about their cultures and so this center will bring all that together and better prepare our students for a career in international agriculture or international activities of one kind or another. It's a great legacy to a great Nebraskan who has been one of our most notable and visible and distinguished alumni. The income from that endowment would allow us to go out and hire some of the best people in the world. We've had a lot of support from individuals who are, are wanting to help not only honor Dr. Eider this way, but stand up this institute. But we also are uh, interested in company partners that are in these areas of trade and finance around the world, that are in that global marketplace, that they might be interested in helping to support the endowment for the Institute, even in terms of naming chairs. That's what it's all about, is having the opportunity to influence all of these coming generations of people and the people they will influence through their lives and careers. So what a legacy to someone like Clayton.